I don't know what to do. That's annoying! It looks terrible. We're hiding these. Ow! What is going on here? This is a joke. Where's the dish? This should be really obvious. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm not sure any of us can quite believe it, nor how on earth it's happened. But today, we welcome actors Dame Emma Thompson and her daughter Gaia Wise to pass it on. Have you any idea of what you've got yourselves in for? No, no, no. I'm no. old. I, I don't even know. I can't even spell YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go home with her, and if I if I mess it up, yeah. Christmas may turn. Yeah. Bad if you make rapidly. me miserable, everything could go horribly wrong for you later. Yeah, and I am threatening you. It's, an actual threat. <laughs> it's a particularly special episode today because Gaia and Emma are here to raise awareness for Beat Charity. For those of you who don't know, Beat Charity helps people with eating disorders. Yeah, and we're going to find out more about the wonderful work they do later on. But first up, Janice, what's the theme? No. Lean in, lean in. Today's theme is Christmas canapes. And in honour of our special guests, we want a Scottish twist, as we know you're Scottish and love to spend the holidays there. You said plural. Canapes. Canapes. Canapes, more than one. You can't have just one. Oh yeah, true, that is a good point. <laughs> We're looking for three different types of Christmas canapes, with six of each. Gaia, as you're a regular sorted viewer, please choose the order. Mike. First. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie. Ben. Barry. Okay. Because Barry's good at placing. <laughs> That's not a bad shout. That's not a Thank bad shout. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Good Let's luck. Go. Take our positions. Take, right. Thank you. Hurrah. Oh, Thank you, Janice. <laughs> so, here's how this ridiculous thing works. Each player has 10 minutes to contribute to creating a delicious array of Christmas canapes. The catch is, they have no idea what the others have done in the kitchen until it is their turn. Gaia and Emma will watch the carnage unfold from the cooking cam area, and they will choose when to step in to have their turn. OK, OK, OK. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm looking at the ingredients there, and I'm thinking, full Scottish breakfast, can I get some Christmassy flavours in? So, like, literally, fry bread as the little bottom, um, some sausages, bacon, some haggis, like, maybe, like, a spiced apple -y thing. He's only got ten minutes. Is that why he's behaving like a mad person? Yes. OK. I don't know whether we should step in. Already? I'm panicking slightly now because I thought that he might be less anxious. Fried bread. Fried bread. No, that's not really doing much, is it? Mm. Like, could we do stewed apples? Let's just chop up some apple and hopefully Ebers will come. He'll come along and go, hmm, Christmassy spices and probably use it for something completely different. Chefy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have these panicking. people ever cooked before? <laughs> a little bit of apple in. We're going to put a lot of sugar in, allspice, some cinnamon powder. Can I commit? Don't look at that side. I don't know what I've done. I've like I've done what a horse does. I'm just bolted. I'm blind at the moment. I have no idea what I'm doing. I might just make some scrambled egg. <laughs> scrambled egg? Don't make scrambled egg, Mike. Do you think we should prevent him from doing that? Stop the clock! Stop the clock! Stop oh, the clock! Wow. Already they're coming in. Get out, Mike. You this just just go. Thank you. Right. Okay. Don't, right. Don't get in my way. Steak. Right. Thing. Get that. We had to lot. stop Mike from making scrambled eggs <laughs> because it, I don't know. I just felt for the eggs. You know, it's just sad. Right. Look. Look. Okay. Look. What are those? I'm going to fry the liver, the chicken livers, really quickly with a bit of whiskey, and then I'm going to stick them in the blender with lots of melted butter. And then we were thinking of basically doing just a little bit of um, pan-fried black pudding with some hazelnuts for a little bit of texture. And then we were going to put some cauliflower in the oven, but just to confuse them. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Do not light it on fire. Do not flambe it. I don't trust you. This oh, is how now. I'm getting out of the way. It could be so wrong. I'm getting out of the way. Right. That's going in there. Okay. And I'm going to start whipping it up. 
Are you going to get that in the oven, by the way, mate? Oh, yeah. Put it on a oh, I've got this. I've got the baking tray out. This is obviously just to confuse people. There is just so much food. Jamie's going to go in and he's going to lose his mind. We've got turmeric. Oh, nice. Curry, curry powder. powder. Curry powder. Just use that. Oh, my God. So are they going to zhuzh that up? Woo! Yes, yes! Now taste it, it might be horrid. I might really have misremembered that in a desperate way. Because it should, it should have time to... That's actually not bad. I'm kind of impressed with that. Two and a half, OK, right. that's going into the oven. <laughs> What's that? What's oh, that? What are you well, doing? Well, I was thinking... So look, a little bit, little bit of black pudding in yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Top it with a little bit of... Oh, that's bit of nice. Stuff. Like that, obviously that's make it look nice. nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, right, that's in there. So I'm just okay. going to dry Don't myself <laughs> on the trousers. Because <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> um, right. OK, now. Okay. Four, three, three two... <laughs> oh. I think we've done all right. I'm going, I'm going six max. Six max, all right. Six max. Do you think she's going to fire her agent? Oh, man. Oh, that's set. <laughs> he needs to put that on top of the pate. How do I, how do I convey that to him? You can't. OK, I think bacon's done. Let's get bacon out. These are going to be so good. I'm quite excited about I this. I am, too. Hungry. Actually, now I'm hungry. Sausages definitely aren't done. Deep fried Mars bars? That's, that's Scottish. Let's throw that in the mix. That's a good idea. I'm not proud of that performance, so I'm going to have to score myself two. Jamie! <sighs> right. Am I going to hate what I spined or am I going to love? Actually, this looks quite... Look at this. <laughs> We've got... So why are there Mars bars? Are we deep frying Mars bars? The batter that I remember how to make is the Yorkshire pudding batter. Could that work around Mars bars? It's inspired. It's inspired, actually. Milk. Probably should have done the flour first. We find that's about right. One of those. Three quarters of the way up with eggs. This is what you were after, wasn't it? Fancy. Oh, look at that there. Whiskey, a little bit of whiskey? Like whiskey batter, is that? No, 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 no don't, don't do that. Don't whiskey do that. Whiskey batter don't do sounds that, like a thing, doesn't it? Oh, oh there we go. We've just poured alcohol into absolutely everything we've made. <laughs> Shouldn't a pink fly go I don't feel like these are going to make it. We could use that batter again. That batter could still be used. I was thinking maybe for Yorkshire puddings, but for the, um, for the you know, for the, um, uh, the sausages in there. So, ah, oh, there we go. Get some oil in there. We'll get that into the oven to heat up. Three, two, one. <laughs> no. That's just a heart attack on a plate and not well presented either. I'm not eating that. I've embarrassed myself in front of uh, some guests. I'm going to score myself seven. Oh, OK. <laughs> Confident. Ebbers! <laughs> oh, this is a first. I get to wear an apron because I haven't got a chef's jacket. What have we got? <laughs> I can only imagine because of who's just come before me that that was a Jamie effort. That should be in there. Yeah. Is that chicken livers? Nice. Some beautiful red meat. I think it's venison. And we can probably do like a little tartare. Basically, very, very fine dice. I think what's happened is people have come in here and just grabbed a whole bunch of Scottish ingredients and not necessarily thought about how they might go together. Oh. But all right, Ben. A little bit of mustard. Salt and pepper. A little bit of allspice. That's a great canapé. I'm not sure we've ever done this with guests who aren't chefs, but they come with the wonders 
of Scottish ideas and influence and we presented a table full of beautiful Scottish ingredients and I feel like collectively we've let them down because I've just realised that was supposed to be deep fried Mars bar wasn't it? How embarrassing that's where we went. Oh no. <laughs> some of that and some of that. That's a great idea look, that's gorgeous. Kedgeri is Scottish, we've got some smoked haddocks there. We could make some little smoked haddock fritters. Right, smoked haddock, curry powder. So kedgeri is a rice dish, but what's better than rice? Cauliflower rice. Ah, oh, you see. Gram flour to bind it, which gives you that bargy-esque. I'm gonna make little bargies. And that's because I, I floretted the f out of that cauliflower. <laughs> Good. Come on. Oh, oh. oh. oh bastard. Ah. And I also want some fresh herbs. What Gaia and Emma don't know is that they will be having a second term, but I'll save that surprise for a little later. Which can go into the fryer. I hope these float, because otherwise they're going to stick to the element at the bottom because someone's destroyed the basket. Yeah, I hope there isn't Mars bar left in that bloody basket because that's not going to go well, is it? And my time is up. I'm going to score myself. A very out of breath, eight out of ten. Bold, I know. I need to get Barry in quick before those bargies burn. Barry! What if he doesn't check the thing? Do, do, do things just blow up? OK, also all I have to do is plate up. What the hell is going on? There's something over... What is that? Wait a minute. Where's the basket gone? Where's that? I need tongs. I'm going to say soft, deep fried soft shell crab. That would be lovely, <laughs> wouldn't it? That would be fancy. What? Ah, oh, what is it? Is that going to be a deep fried Mars bar? Oh, God, that's awful. OK. Stop the clock. Gaia and Emma will now go in for a second turn. Oh, God. We're coming back in, we're coming back in. Janice has made us come back in. How could you, Janice? My life. Get in there, quickly. I'm going to do a scallop. Right, you have to get that out of the oven. You have to get that out of the oven, otherwise it, we're all going to burst into flame. Make that little thing like that and put little bits of green on the top and possibly even a chopped caper. Where's well, I'm the... just going to spend 10 minutes putting bloody parsley on haggis, things. Haggis, haggis. Did you turn that off? Was that you, Janice? She can't be trusted, you know. She's joking. We're going for Sambucas after this. That looks terrible. No, it doesn't. It looks very nice. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, oh God, I hate this. No, you know what? Barry's, Barry's finishing that. I refuse. I'm going to crumble up that doing? black pudding. I'm going to make little, little pieces of bacon and then a little bit of black pudding on the top and a tiny bit of scallop. It's going to be so salty. I don't oh, care. This is, now, this is Scottish. This is actually Scottish. Put it on a bellini. It's, I mean, it's slightly pathetic, this, but look. It's incredibly pathetic. This is so stressful. I'm overriding your decision making. You're putting them on some pan fried bellinis. Oh, OK. I think that shook things up nicely. Now let's get Barry back in. <laughs> I'm cooking! All right. OK, go. <laughs> OK, what's... OK, OK. Oh, it's hilarious. Here, give me a shot. So these scallops are done. Let's take these out. I saw Emma fiddling with these, but I wasn't sure what it was. <laughs> Don't laugh in that, in that way. Right, so they've been cooked in some sort of caramel. Oh my goodness, I really should be tasting as I go. What are we gonna do? We're gonna do, I need a flat, I need a flat bottom. What's gonna go on there? <laughs> <laughs> so I, this, this, is, this, is a, this is a makeshift one. We're gonna have to just like invent I'll this say. one as we go along. Pate on toast. Fancy. Fancy. Look at the put, bloody put the scallops on. Put the scallops on the thing. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I've got three minutes left. Okay. No. Tell you what. Let's just put. Let's just let's build. Let's build it. No, let's don't build put it. mayonnaise I'm on it. I'm going to build. No. Right, we're going to go with curry cauliflower. It'll be the nicest one. You wait. You'll try it, and it'll be gorgeous. Where's the scallops? Um, oh, wait a minute. We have the scallops. I forgot about these things. <sighs> oh, uh. um, and then... Wait a minute! Who didn't cook enough scallops? 
What's that? <gasps> That's what she was trying to do. Yes. Okay, okay. And we're putting these things on here. I need a lemon. Give me a freaking orange. It's orange instead, there's no it's lemons. Orange. It's orange. It's just orange. <laughs> That's not right. I wonder if anyone's seasoned. Is anyone seasoned? Anyone seasoned? They have now. Is that sugar? That's sugar. That's sugar. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's sugar. <laughs> I'm going to have to give myself, you know what? Six. I, I plated up. I counted right. There you go. That'll do. I'm about to turn 22. <laughs> And I was about 16 when I, when I was um, diagnosed incredibly quickly, actually, with anorexia. It, it was um, incredibly traumatic. I think it, it's, it started as control of exercise was my first one. And then that came to restriction of food and I would over-exercise and under-eat. And it became about control and it was because when you over-exercise and under-eat, you don't feel anything. So really, when it comes down to it, it is, a, it is why it's such a powerful illness. Beat came into my life quite, er, quite early into my, um, my eating disorder because I was able to go onto their site and I could read. It was blog posts and it was from people who were going through different stages of their recovery process. And I think that was what was so important to me was that none of it was triggering, none of it was a sort of challenging read. It was just, it's hard and nobody was making light of it it wasn't this kind of like you're gonna be you know everything's gonna be peachy and fine it was it's gonna be really tough mm. but I think that was what was so important was that I was I was seeing it sort of every level of where I could be in places where I didn't I went okay this is too this this is too much for me at the minute like I can't even think of myself in that level of recovery but I can read this thing and I can know okay I'm here now and I'm okay and I don't have to expect anything of myself. I don't have to push myself too hard to get better. It's a safe space, basically, for people in recovery. And they do talks at schools and they go in and they can do ground up work at schools, especially. One of the most important things that BEAT do is uh, really address the family. It's those two things, isn't it? It's the person as an individual who's ill, very ill, and then the family and the the effects upon the family. As parents, the first thing that you do, the first thing you're taught to do, the first thing that as a human animal you want to do is feed your children. And I think that one of the most important things to recognise and really talk about is that parents um, are stigmatised and shamed when their teenagers have mental health disorders of this kind. And that's so unhelpful. Um, not only to the families who are suffering untold misery and the person who's got the disease who's suffering even more untold misery. So one of the most important messages B can get out and you as an activist can get out and I as your supporting parent, <gasps> parent um, is to say do not ever um, make assumptions, learn about this, because it's everywhere, it's very, very common. I started watching, watching the channel probably just as I got ill, weirdly, because I think for me it was holding on to that semblance of my personality that loved cooking and that loved food, but that was overtaken by a very powerful illness that was terrified of it and did not feel like it could be controlled and so therefore we don't even involve ourselves with it. It was keeping a bit of me alive that wasn't connected to the eating disorder. It was keeping part of me that knew that I loved food and I loved cooking and I knew that the kitchen had always been a hub of our family and now it was something I was terrified of. So seeing a group of people that I knew were very, very close friends in a situation where it was happy and joyful and funny reminded me of something that I knew I'd lost and something that I knew when I was getting better I wanted to get back. And there is hope. There and there is, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Of absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. Look at this extraordinary <laughs> <laughs> Don't 
Guys, we've done it. Guys, we made it. Yeah. We made. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to making it. Cheers. 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 Cheers to having something to wash them down with, because <laughs> uh, we're going to need that probably. Ready? Mm -hmm. And. That's great. That looks great. Oh, How did that happen? I'm so chuffed with wow. that. Mike, is this anything like you envisioned at the start of this process? I thought I'd kick it off with a full Scottish breakfast. <laughs> Which is so Christmassy. Well, not. <laughs> so I was going to serve it with some slight, like spiced apple-y sort of ketchup -y thing, and I was thinking that might be enough for Christmas. All right. So true. we started <laughs> with the pate, then for some unknown reason you put cauliflower. I did that to confuse people because I thought it was a competition. I didn't realise this was a collegiate effort. <laughs> um, I didn't realise that we were supposed to try and help each other. Yeah, I did some black pudding and put them into little, the little cups with a little bit of lobster on top. And that was then ignored. I overlooked it. Oh, oh Evers. Yeah, I came back in and then brought some Mars bars to the table. <laughs> Just thought, Jamie's next. And then I deep fried those Mars bars. Very confusing. <laughs> and then I stepped in, made a quick venison tartare, and I used the spiced apples. I did one mm -hmm. and hoped you would follow suit and do the other five. Which I think you did. I did. I also made... <laughs> oh, no. ...some Kedgeri-inspired bargies with the cauliflower. Yes. Thank you, Janice. Oh. That was... I, I didn't get far into my go before Janice apparently twisted the rules. What? And let them yeah. back in again. Let yeah. them back in. It's like letting rodents <laughs> back into I your spent... pantry. Look, it looks really delicious, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? The general mood of the room feels positive. Yeah. Should, should we try them and see see what they taste like? Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> That orange zest is not half bad. That's not half bad, actually. Yeah. And the scallops are cooked really nicely, actually. Yeah. Mark, should we try your pate with another yeah, describe? Right, pate. Let's, do, let's do a bit of pate. pate. Mm. Bang it. Wow, that pate is awesome. That... Mum? Mom. Yes. My mother's recipe. No, that's lovely. Slightly confused by the spiced apple, but it kind of works. No, I think that's great. Are you I having really a like moment? Mm. Leave me alone with mm. the with the, with the, with the, the for a second. Yeah. What did you score yourself, Mike? I gave myself a two. Yeah. Two? Stop it! No, no. it's definitely three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give this overall a pass. I think they are probably some of the better pass it on dishes we've made ever. We did, we did, we did six, six at the time. Mm. Yeah. I think bit. that's still fair. I, I think, think that's fair. Oh, it's pass. definitely a pass. Um, I also agree. I think that's a pass. <laughs> what did you score yourself? Despite your commitment, your, <laughs> Ebers, despite Ebers. your contribution. I thought I did something a little bit different. I also guided us in a direction with the Yorkshire puddings and the batter. So I went for a seven. <laughs> a seven? Four. So I went quite confidently with eight. Wow! Oh, and actually, it didn't all make it to the plate by far, so maybe that was a bit ambitious. However, the team effort, absolutely a pass. I'm really proud of what we made, um, and I'm going to give myself a very humble six. It tasted very nice, which is exceptional for a pass it on, so of course it's a pass. It was quite literally a Christmas miracle. Well done, everyone. Yeah. Well, we gave it a complete pass of passes. But the question is to you guys, would you pass or fail the Christmas canapes? Comment down below. And thank you so much, Gaia and Emma, for coming in and being a part of the chaos <laughs> and for sharing your story with us. We've had an amazing time. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. So here is sort of already made a donation to the Beat Charity. And if you want to do the same, all the information is downstairs. Yes, we can achieve great things when we come together, not only in the kitchen, <laughs> but as a community and we can do some really great stuff. So we'd really appreciate it. If you can, then please do donate. Jay, I, like, I know this is a very basic route to go down, but I feel like you've been a classic fool and you've not only 
made a fool out of yourself, but a fool out of us as well, and the life we lead, mm. foolish. Oh, fries. <laughs> oh, OK, taxi, taxi, get me out of here. Get me out of here. How dare you? Oh, my God, you're so, so embarrassing. <laughs> what, is there any left in here? God almighty.